And when my children were very little, I didn't have time to work in oils anymore. I had, I was lucky that I could actually do a little bit of this. So I would pick, I picked up pastels and I started working with them because I could set them down for hours or days or weeks or even months and then go back and pick them up if I needed to. Um, but then I just fell in love with the colors. You know, everybody, I don't know how many people know, these sticks are pure pigments. They just have a little bit of binder in them, enough to hold them in stick form. And the softer they are, the less binder they have. And until we get the really soft ones like this, and you can just, it's just like butter. You know, it just smooths across this, any surface. Uh, they're wonderful. The colors are luminous, they're bright. Um, but the problem is they're messy. And they come off on your hands and your fingers. And um, breathing in certain uh, certain other materials is not good for your lungs. Um, you should never eat or drink when you're in the studio working with pastels. Um, because you don't want to get it in your mouth. They still use, uh, all these pigments may still have, many of them still carry cobalt, chromium, um, no lead I don't think anymore but just different metal oxides that um, are not good for your body. And because they're so dusty, um, you don't necessarily get them in your mouth through your hands as much as you do breathing them into your lungs, um, which goes straight into your blood system, in your ner central nervous system. So in my studio, I have a um, HEPA filter that I set right on top of my uh, directing table and I have that running full blast all the time I'm working. And it makes a huge difference. I have asthma. I have been, um, been an asthmatic since about, I turned 40, right after my 40th birthday. So I'm very careful about what I'm breathing in. Um, I still, there's a lot of people who use dust masks. I find that uncomfortable. There's a lot of people who use uh, fixatives. I don't. Once it's on, um, the paper that I use is usually very rough. They are sanded surfaces, rough surfaces, because that will hold lots and lots and lots of pastels. Um, right now we're working with a toned surface, which I really love. These are, I believe, ampersand um, uh, pastel papers, and they have a nice grit surface. It's very fine, but it's, it holds a lot of pastels. It's a heavy cardstock, and you can get a lot of pastel on there. What I typically do is draw in a basic uh, shape or design, and all I'm doing is drawing circles for the flowers, the base, a little bit of the material for the uh, paper towels, actually, just to get an idea of what I have. And I'm going to let a lot of this background show through. And why, does anybody know why I chose the color blue when I was looking through my bits of paper? Look at what we're painting. We're painting Yellow. yellows and oranges, and purples and blues are the complementary color. Yeah. Blues in the background are really going to make those yellows and oranges sing. So that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to take um, some of my blues, and all I'm going to do, I do them all the time. I do that all the time. Never be afraid to break your pastels because you want to get them into a size that you can work with. And so I might. I don't know. Did you see my pumpkin painting, uh, Amy? The one I did at your at, at Framations last. Did I see which one? My pumpkins. Oh yeah. That I was. Did you do it? Pardon? You did watch me do it. That was probably the most. I was at the Mosaics Art Festival, and everybody liked that painting, and it was mo the most popular. I couldn't believe it, and. Um, no, I just put it up because I thought the kids would like it. But adults liked it also. So I'm just doing a little bit right here of layering in some background. And I use my fingers a lot. So a lot of people use different materials or different tools to blend their, their pastels. I don't use my fingers. I find it easier to get in the places that I need to get, and I have a lot more control. And I'm not trying to blend it into nothing in one color, because the great things with pastels is you need to layer them, uh, not just blend them. You blend them all together, they just look like one, one color. Um, or, uh, 
and it doesn't really give you that nice pastel -y look. So I am blending here, and I'm just blending in the background, trying to get enough of this blended together. Give me an idea of what I want. Let me see it. Just a whole section right here. And I'm not being really too careful of where my colors go right now. Just trying to get them in there. And I'm not so much blending the darks. I'm trying to uh, layer my lights over those darks I laid down. And if I don't want to, I change it a little bit. A lot of people think you can't change pastels once you get it on there, once you start blending, but you really can. I have lifted off pastels with fan brushes, tissue papers, paper towels. This blue right here in the background. Would you say you lift your pastel off with fan brush? Um, you want off? I can dust dust off pastels with fan brush. Yes. Okay. Say if uh, over here I got it too dark, I can take a fan brush, a small fan brush, and, and, and lift it away, and brush it away, and, and I'll blow it away. A lot of people say, oh, don't, don't blow it, I keep getting those dust in the air. Well, you are. That's why I work with a, a HEPA filter. But um, also, wet hands, I love the wet wipes. You gotta dry your hands once you've uh, washed them off. I try to keep one finger for one color for blending. Say if I've got my light blue here, my medium blue here, my dark blue here. Every now and then I make a little mistake and you can tell when I've mussed it up a little bit. Um, pastels are wonderful. When you're blending your mark, a lot of people like them because they have great marks you can make. And people are very fond of that. Now I am. Okay, so I'm just trying to blend in the background. And I'm probably going to end up, in the end, putting a little bit more of this color in because I'm, I'm liking that the best uh, for the background. And again, I would like to start dark to light. So this nice little gray, just bring it in, that gray. I got to add a little bit of blue to that. Nothing but the blues that I've got out here. And for all pastelists, our goal is to get every single color in the whole world. <laughs> that's a small portion of pastels you have there. Yes, it, it is. And that's only part of what I've got. This is in my travel <laughs> box. And again, if I want that smooth and I don't want to show texture, you can smooth that out really nicely. You gotta really watch a lot of times, and I um, was doing it back and forth there, but you have to watch out where your finger is or where it goes, because you can pick up a color from the side and just smear that right across. So I might add a little of something as a highlight that I want in the front. Highlights, I'm always gonna leave textures. When you see this on your pastels, all you have to do is wipe it off. Give it a second, mm -hmm. maybe turn it around, and use it again. edges of that a little bit later because I'll put in a lot more detail later on. So when I did the pumpkins, that my, it was up against a window and it was a lot of different colors, a lot of different reflections. I didn't really know how to paint that without taking away from the pumpkins in front of them. So I just did this type of, uh, of a, uh, a background and it ended up working really well because it blends in the back and what pops out is what's in front, the orange pumpkins. The background I did for the pumpkins was more of the gray blues. And then you can actually add a few of the highlights, a few dabs of your featured item color in the background just to give it a little bit of body and connect it a little bit. 
So again, I know he's heard this many times because he took my class this spring, is I start from the dark to the light, and I've got <coughs> three orange. general shape. This one's kind of squished up so it doesn't have much of a general shape. But these are going to flow in the background. So I'm just trying to get the, the basic shapes of what I've got going here. Let's see. I'm going to blend this background just a little bit more before I start putting in the stems. Yes, you can. With the brush, uh, paint uh, brush? With a, with a uh, typically I use a, um, a fan brush, especially if I want to get oh, yeah. a small little area. Yeah. If you get a stiff bristle brush, a small stiff bristle bristle brush, you can also Even use that. Even though it's kind of moist, pasty. It, it's not really pasty, it's dusty. Oh. Really. Um, but the thicker you lay it on, the harder it is going to be able to get it off. If there's still going to be some material left on there, it's still going to have stained the paper. So, you're not going to get all, the, all, all of it off, but you can get enough off to be able to lift up some of that material and, and drag another color over the top of it. And I, like I said, I've done that. So it's not sticky at all? No, it's not sticky at all. Very dusty, because I'm going to start coughing here in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Johnson and Johnson or whatever, but I should own stock in that company because I keep going business. There's one yeah. poor little girl that I remember she had, oh, that poor baby, she had it everywhere, on her face, on her hand, the table, the floor. She, after a while, she was painting her face with it, though. Yeah. <laughs> she was sweet. I liked her. She had a good time. Yeah, she did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And if you keep washing your hands off as you're going, You'll, like I said, you'll go through a lot of paper towels, you'll go through a lot of wet ones, but if you keep washing your hands, you'll keep yourself from putting color where you don't want it. So, again, I usually have an apron on, like I lost it, I picked it up at one point when I was getting ready to come here, got my stuff ready, and then I couldn't find it, so probably in the bathroom, in the, you know, in the kitchen, I have no idea. Do it all the time. So, Let me get this out so I can find it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I can find it again no, and look sorry. for it. <laughs> I, I, I broke a, one of my frames, frame print sets while I was looking around for it. So I just decided it was time for me to go. I see your basic outline, but when you come in for the leaves and, mm -hmm. and the dark areas, are you using the... The soft ones? Yeah. Yes. The chalk itself, are you using, you know, a technique with your fingers? To, no, I'm using the chalk itself. Chalk. Um, okay. That would make sense. Because that's, 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 that's the devil in the details. You know, the background and the basic colors, I use my fingers, I do a lot right, of blending. Right, right, right. And then when you get down... You've got to it blended in. Yeah. yeah. See it, you know. It's like right there. I can I can do this with this and get the basic shape. Right. That's almost pretty right. much a round circle, and I'd be fine. Even this one is sort of an oval, and and then start working from there. And I like, and I even maybe layer a little bit of red on top of that, especially around the edges. 
You can see that nice red edge is there. And then in the yellow, um, the middle part, the middle part, I see a lot of green in that yellow. So I am going to put a little bit of green in there and see what I make. I could make a mess. And I'm using. It almost looks like a yellow ochre. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. And see, I'm kind of, one of the things with pastels is how you put it down makes all the difference, especially in the, in the final right. pieces. Now you're going light right I'm here. going very light. Yeah. And I'm just using okay. the corner. And a lot of people think that you can't get details with soft pastels, but you can. Right. Again, breaking them like this, you just have a beautiful little edge there. And I can make a beautiful little line with that if I wanted to. So don't be afraid to break, break your pastels. Don't leave them in, in long stick forms because you can't manipulate them. You can't, you need to, if I need a piece a, a half an inch long, then I can't, can't don't find anything else. I have whole pieces, I'll break that half inch off just so I can get it in there and make it go do what I want it to do. I'm selling all my paint. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. And then, <laughs> stippling a little bit just because I think that's going to, make it look better. But I also think if I add a little bit of orange in there, see, and with um, pastels, you want to usually want, typically when you work dark to light. But see, I put that green in there, and I'm liking it, but it needs some orange, a little right. darker orange right. in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and put the darker orange in there, and I'm going to stipple it, especially around the edges. And then I can go back in with my green and go over that and add some extra. I don't have enough of that dark. And again, one of the best things you can do, give your painting a little cohesion, is to use the same colors throughout in different areas. So I'm going to use that yellow in the seated area for these three. And I'm going to use the brownish red that I just used for these in this section. Now, as you can see, it's very messy. Okay. And the, the farther along you get, I either work off of an easel or I work on a drafting table that's tilted. Right, right. So that really helps me. I work from top to bottom. Mostly. If I work on a very large piece, I have a, a folding table that I can fold out. It's on wheels and I can work top to bottom. And I do. And don't be afraid to do that. I've turned paintings upside down mm -hmm. to get a better I, uh, idea right. of color. Because if you put in my color, that's what you're looking for. Um, and it'll be a, you'll be amazed at how much better the painting tape turns out out if you focus on the color and don't focus on the uh, details right away. See, it's starting to already looks kind of seedy in the middle there. Some of this reddish orange background, I could probably add a little bit more layers to that. 
and instead of going around and just making circles, I'm going to start making the sort of like the flower petal shape because the red is the background color of those petals, but they have a lot of orange and yellow in the middle. And plus, you need a little shadow behind under, and under, around and underneath this um, seed pod to give it a little form to make it come out. That's a good red. That's kind of bright. Now it's a little darker. This is a harder pastel. See how it yeah. gives me a fine line? Right. Compared to this one? Right. Compared to this one? It, it's the, the makeup, the composition. Soft, medium, right. hard. Right. Detail, lots of color. I use the harder ones for the background colors, the softer ones for the, the upfront colors, because that's where the glow comes from. I don't think that's dark enough. See, it's too bright. There's a little bit of a, of a, a deepness around there, so what am I going to use? I think the leaves look interesting on that. The yeah. Color. I did see those red leaves. Yeah, the color. And especially on this one, you want to be able to bring out that dark purplish. But I would leave that to the last because they're so light and delicate. Um, I want to do. I want to do those last. Use oil pastels any time? No. I prefer the uh, soft pastels. Um, you can't mix the two. Um, oils and softs don't, ma don't mix. You did use um, water. Yes. You know, watercolor, they, they are wonderful with watercolor. Um, as a, you can use, use watercolor as a background and get your background colors just in the watercolor and then you can paint over the top. Again, especially if you don't have a tinted surface, the watercolor paintings are, um, or backgrounds are wonderful because they can give you uh, a complementary color. Oh, that's a bruise. Um, they give you a um, complementary color or even the same color, uh, color scheme to work with, you can blend the background in as a maybe a mid tone. I've used red backgrounds when I have a red background in my painting, so 
I, it just blends in. It's my mid-tone. That way I can figure out where my lights and my darks are compared to that background color. You know that day we set, we set a whole scenery in mm -hmm. the watercolor yeah. and then did the pastel. Yeah. That was really cool. And you can add it just as highlights or like I said, you can cover most of the watercolor up with yourself. And I've seen watercolors that you know have that real fine blended um, look or, or drip and drippy look and they leave a lot of paper around the edges and then just add highlights to maybe the, the um, if it's a floral, maybe to, right. to the tips of the leaves, right. Right. tips of the tips of the petals, that type of thing. And it really does uh, go well. Uh, yeah. Huh. Why not? <laughs> I need to pull up my acrylics again. I'm getting stuck on watercolor, you know. I mean, it's like, but I like it, I enjoy it. I want to get temper paint and go off to the airport and have a jet engine run and throw it up in the air and let it splatter all over. <laughs> I want to try that. I want to, I've seen that actually done, man. I've been We're playing. pretty good. <laughs> you got it? I've been Oh. I mean, you know really cool is you get somebody to stand in front of it like this. And then when it's all done, have them walk away. See? Yeah. <laughs> I, I did the nebula in my life. They wouldn't be. They couldn't stand. Is that these for a vampire? And I go, I just took the painting and just took <laughs> it. I think it'd be neat, though, honestly. It, you know, I, saw, I didn't see it live, but I saw it in a video. And the guy was just, he'd throw it up, and it, it would, you know, he wouldn't stand behind the jet, but he'd throw it. And it would just, yeah. and the colors, and he just did it tastefully, and that was cool. You seen spray paint art yet? Pardon me? On YouTube, spray paint art. Oh, on YouTube, yeah. right. I see it every time I go down. No, this is art St. Louis. <laughs> no, well, yeah, well now they're having them guys as artists coming out and actually doing stuff. There. Yeah, well, good because they need to be using yeah. talents for something else. Yeah. I think some of those are. I was one of the first part to grab that guy that they had on the news there. Oh, thank you. Roadside, roadside artist. Yeah. 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 He was good. And there is a long, long Can you hold that up so people can see the sure. progress? Because I know the ways are strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sorry, that's that. No, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, it's going good. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to get a little definition to yeah. the leaves. Did you say you could the use pebbles. watercolors for a background? Yeah, absolutely. Water, mm -hmm. Watercolor looks beautiful with pastels. Wait for it to dry out. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a petal falling off. Or yeah. Something. Or it could be a little bit of light touching the background. Yeah. This could be a blue curtain, mm -hmm. and this is touching the background. Um, and, but it dulls that color down when you, because it's a complementary color. You're laying it on top, and I'm blending it in a little bit. I like that. Mm -hmm. So I like the scumbling. I use that a lot in the tree, for trees mm -hmm. and leaves. Instead of trying to make all those individual trees, you know, I block in the areas for the leaves, and then I just scumble <coughs> dark first, mid tones, and then lighter tones up um, okay. dark to, to make it come out. Yeah. Um, do you remember the trees that we did? Yes. Uh, did yeah, you find I, that helpful? Ex ex very much so. And I like using the white in, the, in some of it. <coughs> you could show the light reflect. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Because you fun. really the highlight in the, the your lightest highlights can be just where the the lights come in really cool. for the background where you and you'll have three and four and five colors just in there and they're not all greens you know you might have reds and browns and green in the background as your darks maybe some purples and then you layer a couple of greens over the top of that and then you might have yellows or even light blue uh, as your highlights so. As you look at the painting, it looks like a green tree. You know it's a green tree, but you have five and six different colors in there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably like painting. You, know, mm -hmm. you find your light source coming in. Right. Your light source colors reflect mm -hmm. on different colors. You know, so. And uh, or, 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 excuse yeah. me. What do you what do you do when you finish finish your drawing or you know, your your pastel drawing? There? I do not fix them. You don't. I okay. do not. Um, fixing darkens and dulls. Mm -hmm. The pastels. That's why I only use 
rough sand and papers. So you don't have any problem with it if somebody brushed against it, it'd be having hanging somewhere. Well, if, it, I, if they're always <laughs> under glass. <laughs> And if I mat them, you know, I've got a half an inch um, uh, in between the mat and the... You put glass over them or a non-reflective glass over them? Non-reflective, typically. I always use UV protection because just like oils or anything else, you need to have that UV protection. Um, I've been, for my larger paintings, um, I've been using the museum glass because it does uh, not reflect yeah. the lights in the room as much. Um, and it, they look, it's a huge difference. I've got paintings that are one right next to each other, museum glass, UV glass, and you can see all the reflections in this one, and hardly anything else over here. But you also have to look at the cost, too. Oh, yeah, what is it, double, triple the cost for museum four times? Yeah. So I, won't, I, I don't use it all the time, just on my, my special pieces. So. That Amy frames for me so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> right, Amy? Yes. And as I frame them, I say to myself, I'll never love do this again. <laughs> she always says, I'll never ever do this again. I don't know why Juliet keeps doing pastels. I hate no. this. I actually do love pastels. What was your friend's name there that night? Grace? No, was it Grace? The one that came that one night? No, the one that was with you working the whole time. Oh, Julie. That's right. Because I was saying, <laughs> isn't your guys' names real close? Yeah, it was. It, it was Julie close. and Juliet. Yep, Julie and Juliet. She was a sweetheart. Well, some of my books on pastel say you can use alcohol and it kind of burns it into, I guess, the paper. It usually blurs your vision. Yeah. But you know, you can paint great after once in a while. Oh, not that kind of It's great after a while. Yeah. Hey, look at that. That's really awesome. You know, that's a bad I saw that. I have never done that. I would be, honestly, I'd be afraid to do that. I was afraid to do that. I think that would be very, especially if you worked long and hard. I would practice that on just a oh, piece yeah. of junk. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, alcohol dries very, very quickly. Oh, Ken? I called him and I said, one of my books says to do alcohol. He says, I don't know about yeah. that. He said, dig something out of the trash that you've done. And yeah. Because I threw away a lot of pastels in the yeah. trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've thrown away a lot of pastels in my life. But I did spray a fixative on my final. Yes. I took it outside and I tested the spray first on, you know, thin air. Mm-hmm. That's why I was praying. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with those. It's scary, I think. Well, it is. I mean, you can mess up a painting very easily. Oh, I um, the way I usually mess up a painting is I layered and layered and layered and layered, and it's just it um, would hold any layers, and I didn't uh, if you, leave if enough you tooth for the detail. Yeah. And that's the same way with watercolors. Yeah, you overwork. You, you over. Yeah, or anything else probably. You just overwork them. Yeah. Well, we can do it so thick with oil. <laughs>
keep you on, it's gonna, I'm gonna start you on. No. <laughs> it's not gonna look good on the video. <laughs> Amy's video will be bad. Well, been on pain medication for two weeks now, and it's like, you know, it's taking its toll on me. It's making you sick, taking your pain medicine. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm weaning myself off of it now. I, you know, pain's got intolerable. I mean, it was like, it kept asking me at the hospital, what's your pain level? One through ten. I said, like, eleven and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It came out of nowhere with my back. You know, it's like I've got ruptured disc back here and everything going on. It's like I didn't even know I had anything going on. It was like I got up at three in the morning. I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, you know, I couldn't even breathe. Mm -hmm. It came from so bad. The bass part turned out nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I was just playing a little bit, got the bass a little that bit is, better. That is a little really bit more starting to, starting to pop. Yeah. yeah, a little bit more defined. How close are you to being finished? Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm, I'm not a big, I can get something done in an hour's time. I, I well, play. It's, 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 and I'm talking. It's the <laughs> and I'm talking. I'm sorry. No, you, you're, you well, shouldn't maybe have we to go finish about one. Ten more minutes. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. If you guys are willing to hang out and listen to me. And I don't know if Juliet told you all of this, but she is part owner of the Clayton Art Gallery. So down in um, what's the Clayton. name of the street? It's on. Clayton. Uh, is it on Clayton Street or it's is it on, on Waterford? Uh, Bemiston. Bemiston. So. Or is it? Um, Clayton. Yeah. Oh, in, in Clayton. Clayton. Uh, do you know where Four the? Uh, City Hall is. It's right across from City Hall, right between Emo's and Wong's Chinese Restaurant. What, what do you have there? It's a uh, art gallery. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna come and see you. Yeah, come on down. I'll be working there on Saturday. Where is it? It's in, Clayton. in Clayton. Oh, Clayton. Okay. In, in ben, on Bemiston. Yeah, whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give it five, seven more minutes. Let's okay, five, seven more minutes. Let me see what I can do. I'm going to start moving more. Judith, just two steps. If you guys ever get the opportunity when Julia does this, it, yeah, it's, what was it, five weeks? Six weeks. Six weeks, and it's free. and. Uh, you just go and, and uh, you meet new people and you get to learn more about doing this in pastels. It was really interesting. Now, that was the first time I did all pastels. I usually do um, a little watercolor, a little drawing, and then I add in the pastels to go along with it. Um, well, this is where you do this in your, in your uh, gallery? No, at, for, through the Riverfront Arts Association. And we're out of St. Peter's. The Riverfront Arts Association in St. Charles, they do two six-week classes a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. Let's no, have what? it in St. Charles, St. Peter's, or O'Fallon. They kind of rotate around. Something coming this fall? Yeah. What is it should have already started in September, October. Oh, so it's not you. Um, look, no, I'm not doing it. They usually have me do it once a year, one or two years. St. Charles Riverfront. Riverfront Arts Association. Are you familiar with group. Yes. Are you familiar with the huge um, vendor show they had at Kirkwood? Um, it was, uh, you walked into the gymnasium and there were rows of vendors that there would be painters, photographers, watercolors, pastels, just, and they were all their own artists. And there was just some amazing work. Sculptures, uh, paper mache, um, Sherry was there. Um, you know Sherry Salon? Yeah, she was there. When was this? It was, um, I guess a friend of mine, him and I went, and I'm thinking May, maybe? You're kidding. Let's see if I can ask him. Also coming up is the uh, vintage market days in uh, Chesterfield, and that's to pay few bucks to get in and it's people mm -hmm. that have all kinds of stuff to do it's outside. You need to look it up on 
the internet.
Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org.